You are now in tune to the most intriguing podcast, podcast. in the universe. Hosted by the scientist Leon Marshall. Are you ready for Marshall's Melanin Pod Class? You gotta learn today. I found it really enlightening, like educational as well. I there were a lot of things I didn't know, especially with melanin and like all the benefits of melanin. So I found that very interesting. I love it. Look, it's so much information. You know, it's entertaining and it's just facts after facts after facts. This is the podcast where science is made simple and learning is fun. Welcome to Marshall's Melanin Pod Class, Class One. Now. Here's your host, the scientist Leon Marshall. Yo, Marshall! Yo, what's good, people? My name is Leon Marshall, and you're tuned into my first ever podcast. Big up everyone who's listening right now. Big up everyone in the chat. Welcome, 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 welcome. Now this is going to be more educational than anything else. That's why I called it a pod class as opposed to just a podcast. This is the first of its kind. This is the first of its kind, people. So everyone who's listening right now, you're part of history. Trust me. Whether I end up doing just the one class or a thousand and one classes, you are part of this first one. So pre the historical context of what you're listening to right now, this is history. And later on, I want you guys to interact with me. I want to make it very interactive. So later on, when I open up the floor for questions and comments, make sure you guys raise your hands and interact with me. So if you would like to speak live on this pod class, I will give you the opportunity to do so later. You can ask questions, make comments, or just tell me what's on your melanin mind. I don't mind what you say. Just be a part of this first class. Just interact with me a bit later. But that's later. Now I've created this pod class so we can all truly understand melanin once and for all. What it is and how it works. We must change the narrative around melanin if we are ever going to understand it. And that change happens right now. I've been to quite a few and I've heard Leon talk at other events and as usual you do come away learning something. Listen, I am fully, fully energised. That is brilliant. It's yeah. just so informative, mind-blowing. Um, it's something that, you know, it's just put me on a journey of knowing thyself. It's just fantastic. Yes, people. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, let me just get into a good mood. Let me put on some mood music. And I'm going to tell you about everything that's going to be happening during this podcast. All right, so this is a bit new, so let me know how I'm sounding. If I'm sounding good, just put some ones in the chat for me. Now, before I start the podcast, let me just do a quick intro. So for those that don't know me, my name's Leo Marshall. I'm a sports science lecturer. I lecture on the sport and exercise science degree course at London South Bank University. And I've worked at various universities in and around London. Imperial College London and Middlesex University to name a few. My specialty is sports science and that's what I got my degree in way back when, sport and exercise science. So my background is more anatomy and physiology than anything else. How the body works from a science perspective. But through studying this, studying at various universities, I found that there was a lot of stuff that they that they just weren't telling us about how the body worked. And I always found that strange. 
like they talk about the brain but wouldn't mention the pineal gland or neuromelanin they talk about skin but wouldn't mention melanocytes I always found that odd it wasn't until I read one of Dr. Leila Africa's books that things started to make sense to me I was like oh okay this is why they don't teach this stuff in schools, colleges or universities makes sense now and once I started to learn about melanin and put two and two together it made me realise how important this information was and how important it was to share it so long story short I created the Hidden Science Academy with my sister Vinika Marshall and we started to just deliver events and courses all over London spreading this knowledge spreading the information that we believe everyone should know now this was like four to five years ago but recently I've had many people say things to me like yeah Leon we love your lectures and your courses and we love the online webinars that you do but can you do something can you do something where we can just listen to it on the go something that we can download and just listen to on our laptops or on our smartphones as opposed to sitting down and watching and that's what gave me the impetus to create this podcast so big up all the people that inspired me to do this you know who you are so this podcast series is going to focus on melanin all aspects of melanin Everything you ever wanted to know about melanin will be covered in this podcast series, guaranteed. Which occurs on the first of every month, by the way, people. I'm gonna be doing these podcasts on the first of the month, every month. So whatever day that the first of the month falls on is when I'll be doing a class. And each class will only be like an hour long. I'll make sure that all the classes, including this one, is kind of like under an hour. So the information is not overwhelming. You know, keep each class short and concise. So yeah, once a month, the first day of every month for as long as this continues. And what will determine whether or not this continues for a long time? Well, you guys, the listeners, you guys will determine how long this will continue. So as long as you guys continue to listen, share this with your friends and family, talk about it, then I'll continue to do this. Now, each month we'll cover a different aspect of melanin. Like today's class is about melanin and sunlight. So get your questions ready. Next month's class will be about melanin and sound. Trust me, you don't want to miss that one. Now, as this podcast will focus on the science of melanin, it makes sense to start with a definition of science that is easy to understand. So here's my definition of science. Science is logic backed up by evidence. Now, this is my personal definition of science. It's logic backed up by evidence. And when I say logic, I just mean common sense. And then you just back up your common sense with proof. So for example, if I was to ask you, what's two plus two? I'm hoping that your common sense would kick in and you'd say four. But what if I said to you, can you prove that? Well, the easiest way to prove it is to put two fingers on one hand and two fingers on the other and count them out loud. And there's your proof. Now, when I started to go with my own definition of science, because there's loads of definitions out there, but when I start to go with my own, I started to realize that science is simple, which I find interesting because when I was at school, I didn't find science simple. I found it very confusing. I wonder why. And I wasn't the only one. A lot of young children find science very confusing. Physics, chemistry, biology, wherever it is, they find it very confusing. So when I started to teach, I made, I prided myself on making sure that I taught in a very simplified way. And one of the reasons why I like to teach in a very simplified way is because a wise man once said, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. That was arguably one of the greatest scientists of all time, Albert Einstein. So if he can keep it simple, why can't we? And big up the people in the chat, I see you. There's some questions about sunscreen. Trust me, we're gonna cover that tonight because tonight 
is about melanin and sunlight. So get your questions ready. And remember, later on, I'm going to open up the floor so you guys can interact and ask questions and, and go live on this pod class. But yeah, I like to keep things super simple because Albert Einstein says, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. And I agree with this, but I take it one step further. I'd say if someone's teaching you science and they can't explain it simply, it means they don't understand the subject well enough or they do. They just don't want you to understand it. So they explain it to you in a confusing way, in a complex way, so you don't get it. It's either one of the two. So throughout this podcast, I'm going to keep things super simple because to me, science is just, it's just two plus two. Or as another wise man once said, boom. Two plus two is four, minus one, that's three, quick maths. Quick maths. That's all science is to me, quick maths. Now, for those of you who have seen my lectures before or come to a Hidden Science Academy before, a uh, Hidden Science Academy event before, you know that I break down science in a very simplified way. But I'm curious, is there anyone in the chat that has never been to a Hidden Science Academy event before or never seen any one of my lectures? Like if this is your first time at one of our events, just put a one in the chat. Let me see if there's any first timers with us tonight. If this is your first time listening to me or first time at a Hidden Science Academy event. Any first timers? Some people putting up their hands. All right, remember, couple people putting up their hands. All right, and couple people putting ones. All right, for the people. Lots of people putting up their hands. Remember, I'm going to allow you guys to talk a bit later. So raise your hand a bit later, but big up for the people raising their hands, saying that this is their first time. Quite a few people raising their hand. Big up, big up, big up. For all those people who are raising their hand and for all those people putting ones in the chat, I've got, I've got one thing to say to you. You're going to learn today. You're going to learn today. So what are you going to learn today? Here's what we're going to go through. I'm going to touch on the melanin code of silence. There seems to be a code of silence around melanin in the science community. And what's crazy is when they do talk about melanin, they talk about it in a certain type of language. I'm going to touch on the language and then we'll just go through the basics of what melanin is, the different types, its main role and its relationship with the sun. So before I start, just a quick disclaimer, very quick disclaimer. I am not a laboratory scientist. So I can only go by what others have found out about melanin. Other laboratory scientists who have actually been in the lab and have had melanin under the microscope or whatever they used to study it. However, I have been blessed with something that we've all been blessed with. And that is common sense and logic. And what I've found through my own observation is that when you tap into your common sense, your internal logic of how the universe works, you'll start to realize that there's nothing, absolutely nothing, a laboratory scientist can tell you about melanin that you didn't already know inherently. We must change the narrative around melanin if we are going to understand it. Changing the narrative means that we need to change the language change the way we talk about and describe melanin scientifically. It's the language that they use that stops us from truly understanding or understanding what we're dealing with. It's the language that they use in science that causes the disconnect. All the scientific jargon and complex words that they use, it blocks us from absorbing the knowledge to the point where we just throw up our hands and say, frick this man, it's too confusing and shy away from the science. It's like if me and my friend were having a, if I had a Chinese friend and me and my Chinese friend were having a conversation about you in Chinese, you're locked out of the conversation if you don't speak Chinese. And we can have a full on conversation about you in your presence and you wouldn't un understand the word we're saying. Why? Because you don't speak Chinese. So that then becomes a powerful way for me and my friend to share information about you in front of you without you even knowing what we're talking about. 
I hope that makes sense because that's what they do with science. They're literally talking about us in front of us and we don't even realize it. And this is done on purpose. They make this stuff complex on purpose. They make scientific language confusing on purpose because trust me people, this stuff is simple. It's simple to understand and it's simple to explain. And I'll prove it during this class. So what is melanin? Scientists will call it a biopolymer. Again, scientific jargon, I'm gonna break down these words. A biopolymer or a biochrome or simply a biological pigment. Now, here's a note for you to make. Pigments absorb sunlight. Just make a note of that somewhere. Pigments, anytime you hear the word pigment, pigments absorb sunlight. But the scientists, they'll say that melanin is a biopolymer or biochrome or a biopigment. Now, let's just break down those words because in order to understand science, you need to understand the language. So let's break down these words. Bio, when you see the word bio, that means life or living organism. Chrome means color. So biochrome is any pigment produced by a living organism that produces color. And they might call it a polymer. Poly means many and mer means units. So units or parts. So melanin has many units to it, many parts to it. Now, instead of me telling you everything about melanin, I'm going to read through what other scientists have said about it. Because remember, I'm not a laboratory scientist. So what do I know? I'm going to tell you what laboratory scientists have said about melanin. People who have actually studied this thing and done experiments with it. So the first laboratory scientist who's actually done experiments with it, this guy, his name is Dr. Timothy Moore, and he's written books about melanin. Now, what did he say about melanin? He says that in humans, melanin is the primary determinant of skin and hair color. Melanin has genetic, biochemical, and functional links to the immune system. Interesting. It has functional links to the immune system. But over the last year or so, all we've been hearing about is immune system this and immune system that. But for whatever reason, melanin hasn't come up a lot, has it? Because again, there's a melanin code of silence. This doctor says that it neutralizes oxidants and antimicrobial drugs. He said that it's found in almost every organ of the body and is necessary for the brain and nerves to operate, the eyes to see and the cells to reproduce. I'll say that again, because that's very powerful. Found in almost every organ of the body, people. So melanin is not just skin. It's pretty much in every organ. And it's necessary for the brain and nerves to operate. So no melanin in your brain, no brain operation. Your eyes, no melanin in your eyes. That means you can't see. And for the cells to reproduce. And he says it's also found in the striae vascularis of the inner ear. So no melanin in your ear means you wouldn't be able to hear. He says that it helps to repair DNA in body cells. And he says there are many types of melanin, cosmomelanin, eumelanin, pheomelanin, and neuromelanin, to name a few. That's one scientist. Here's another one, Dr. Carl Marit. Dr. Carl Marit. Now he's actually got a YouTube video where he talks about melanin for like 15 minutes. I suggest that you guys, after this, or at some point over the weekend, watch this video. He talks about melanin for over 15 minutes on this YouTube video. So you can maybe type in his name and you might find it that way. Dr. Carl Marit. Now, what does he say about melanin? He calls melanin the chemical key to life. Someone's saying Cosmo melanin. Yeah, Cosmo. So think about that. Because when I heard that, when someone, when I first read that, I was like, Cosmo melanin. So when we look up in the sky and we see blackness, what are we actually looking at? That's interesting. But yeah, this doctor says that melanin is the chemical key to life. He says that melanin absorbs, uh, has a broad absorption spectrum and it absorbs thousands of times more electromagnetic radiation than chlorophyll. Hmm. That's interesting because in school, they teach all the children about chlorophyll which is the green pigment found in plants that absorb sunlight. So they teach the children about chlorophyll, the green pigment. But according to this scientist, melanin 
absorbs thousands of times more electromagnetic radiation. And here's another thing about science. When you see the word radiation, they just mean light. Again, scientific jargon, electromagnetic radiation. They're just talking about light. So melanin absorbs thousands of times more light than chlorophyll. Interesting. He says it exists in many tissues beside the skin. He says it's present in the developing fetus. He goes one step further. He said it's, uh, if it's not present enough, that's when you might lose the baby. That's how important melanin is to life. Now, I did say he's got a 15-minute video on YouTube. I'm not going to show the whole 15 minutes, but I am going to show you a short clip. It's like 30 seconds, 30, 45 seconds or something like that. And all I want you to do is just listen to what he says about melanin and see if you can catch what he says right at the end of this clip. A lot of people miss what he says at the end, but see if you can catch it. Listen carefully and listen to what he says right at the end of this clip. Melanin's role is, in fact, even being rethought in medicine that, you know, is it really something that just absorbs sunlight or does it have, does melanin have a role in the immune system in the body? And... Uh, is it really more of an antimicrobial kind of defense against bacteria? Because melanin is found throughout all the animal and vegetable kingdom. And melanin is the very thing that you have in your hair and in your skin that gives you the color. Whether you're more red, whether you're more brown, whether you're tanned, whether you're not, is because the melanin produced by your skin in the parts of the cell called melanocytes or the pigment of your skin. And some people who have a condition called vitiligo where they, their skin looks blotchy and they have white patches, they don't make this pigment. When you're exposed to ultraviolet radiation, you make more of it. When you're exposed to ultraviolet radiation, you make more of it. When you're exposed to ultraviolet radiation, you make more of it. I don't know if you caught what he said at the end there. Did you guys catch that? I know he said it quite quick. A lot of people miss that, but I don't know if you caught what he said at the end there. I'll repeat it for the people who may not have caught it. He said, when you're exposed to ultraviolet radiation, you make more of it. In other words, ultraviolet radiation tops up your melanin. Now, why is that important to understand? Well, because you know, the melanin code of silence, which a lot of scientists tend to abide by, where they don't really talk about the truth about melanin. When they do talk about melanin, you'll hear them say things about, you know, ultraviolet rays. There's a certain language that they like to use. So I'm going to I'm going to play you a couple of clips. So we're all going to just listen to the language. Now, listen to the way they talk about melanin when they do talk about it, because, again, there's a melanin code of silence. They don't like to talk about melanin. But when they do listen to how they speak. Now, this first clip that I'm going to play to you is from a university YouTube channel. It's a it's a big university in America, but they've got a YouTube channel where they they teach their students online about science which a lot of universities are now doing. A lot of universities are going online, creating YouTube channels and doing classes through YouTube. So listen to the way they talk about skin color on this YouTube channel. Again, a university YouTube channel, listen to the language. And I'll be pausing it just to um, give my little commentary throughout. So listen to this. Skin color is determined primarily by pigments called melanin, produced at the base of the epidermis by specialized skin cells called melanocytes. Melanocytes produce two types of melanin pigment. The first of these is eumelanin, which is brown-black in color. The other type, known as pheomelanin, is red-yellow. So far, no lies detected. So he said that melanocytes these skin these specialized skin cells called melanocytes produce the melanin but what type of melanin depends on um, you know your genetics so he says that the melanocytes will either produce a type of melanin called eumelanin which comes in black and brown or a type of melanin called pheomelanin which comes in red and yellow so so far no lies detected but listen to the language let's move it on a bit hold on a sec all right. 
People with lighter skin tend to produce more pheomelanin, while those with darker complexions generally produce more eumelanin. The distribution of skin colors is clearly not random. Nature has selected for people with darker skin in tropical latitudes. All right, so here's where the jargon starts to come in and they start to use um, natural selection. So just, you got, when you're listening to these people talk about science, you, you'll start to pick up patterns. So he starts to talk about natural selection. So nature and natural selection. So listen carefully. Especially in non-forested regions where ultraviolet radiation from the sun is usually the most intense. Those whose ancestors lived for long periods near the equator have greater quantities of eumelanin in their skin, which is usually brown or black, and protects against high levels of exposure to the sun and its dangerous ultraviolet rays. And here comes the jar, here comes the language. This is the language that you'll start to hear. So did you hear what he said? The reason why, you know, people around the equator have black to brown skin is because it protects them from the harmful effects of ultraviolet radiation. Now, remember what the scientists before him said. The scientist, the scientists before him said that the more you're exposed to ultraviolet radiation, the more of the melanin is going to produce. In other words, it tops up your melanin. Now, this guy is saying that you um, produce melanin to counter the effects of the harmful UV radiation. Just listen to the language. Now, I'm going to play you another one. This is from a TED talk. Remember TED talk back in the day, uh, even now is like the popular um, thing that people go to to get knowledge. TED talks, you know, when you go on YouTube, you'll see people with millions of views on their TED talks. This TED talk was from a lady called, is it Nina Jabronski? I, I don't know if I said her last name right, but she talks about skin color a lot. Yeah. And I'm going to play you a little clip from her TED talk. You can find this on YouTube easily. Nina Jabronski. Jabronski or Jabrowski or something like that. And she starts talking about skin color. Again, she talks about the natural selection. So they like to go down this Darwin theory of evolution sort of, you know what I mean? Sort of um, understanding, but listen carefully to what she says. Again, listen to the language. So melanin was recruited in our lineage and specifically in our earliest ancestors evolving in Africa to be a natural sunscreen, where it protected the body against the depredations of ultraviolet radiation, the destruction or damage to DNA. The depredation of ultraviolet, the destruction, the damage. Do you hear the language, people? Do you hear the language, like the, the harmful UV radiation, the depredation? What does depredation even mean? Hold on a second, let me come out of this. What does depredation even mean? Let me just quickly go online and see what depredation means because the words that they use are too funny. Remember, they're talking about the sun, you know. Let me just quickly do this. Hold on one second, family. What does depredation mean? All right, here we go. I just Googled it. Depredation, an act of attacking or plundering. <laughs> the depredation of the sun. It's attacking us. It's plundering us. You gotta listen to the language. Depre she used the word depredation, you know. That is too funny. The depredation of the sun. It's attacking, it's attacking us. We can't take this. <laughs> oh gosh. The oh man. All right. So melanin was recruited. All right, here's the last one. Again, when you when they do talk about melanin, there's a melanin code of silence. They don't like to talk about melanin, but when they do, you have to listen to the language. My lady used the word depredation. Depredation means plundering. <laughs> oh my days. But yeah, all right, this last clip now, I got this from YouTube. I got this from a children's YouTube channel. Again, teaching children about science. Again, the way the world's going, everyone's going to be online. So if your children are studying online and they're studying science, they might, they might come across these type of YouTube channels that are gonna teach them about skin color and melanin and that sort of stuff. So again, this is teaching children about skin color and melanin. Listen to the language. 
Why do we have different skin color? As you look around, you see people with different skin tones. Skin is the human body's largest organ, serving as our protector from harsh environmental elements. While this protection is a staple in every modern person's biological makeup, the color of skin is unique to each individual. The development of different skin pigmentation is evolutionary and is part of nature's natural selection. For people who live in tropical latitudes, where ultraviolet radiation from the... Did you catch that? Part of nature's natural selection. Again, they try, they use this little jargon, theory of evolution. You know, the theory of evolution is we all originated in Africa, but then we evolved to, to become lighter skin than, you know, straight hair and that's an evolution you got pre the language let me bring that back so you don't miss that and is part of nature's natural selection for people who live in tropical latitudes where ultraviolet radiation from the sun is the most intense nature has selected darker skin their skin tends to become darker as the body produces more melanin to counteract the effects of the sun's rays over successive generations to counteract counteract because you're you need to counteract the effects of the sun do you get that counteract body produces more melanin to counteract the effects of the sun's rays over successive generations genes are passed down from parents to their children including the tendency to produce a certain amount of melanin given the area where they live likewise Northern people tend to have lighter skin colors because they don't receive as many of the sun's harmful UV rays. The sun's harmful UV rays. Oh, the sun is such a, it's so harmful. You know, the depredation of the sun is just so harmful to us. Like, this is why we need to change the language around melanin or we're never going to understand. Remember, this is a, a children's YouTube science channel this is what children are going to be listening to talking about oh, okay i have melanin to protect me from the harmful rays of the sun now just to be clear can the sun harm you yes of course it can but is that the main reason why you have melanin to protect you from the sun's harmful rays is that the main reason like just pick up a book, people. Read any book about the sun and the earth and you'll quickly learn how important the sun is to life on this planet. So why would you need protection from something that is so important to life? Your life. Not just your life. The life of every living organism on this planet depends on the sun. No sun, no life on earth. Just let that sink in for two seconds. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel great when I'm out in the sun. I feel the warmth, the love of the sun, you know, that's what I equate it to. That warmth is like love. And I feel that every time I'm out in the sun. <laughs> it's it's kind of like the same feeling I get when I'm around my family. That same feeling of warmth. Do you get that? love that's what i get when i'm out in the sun i don't know about you this is why we need to change the language around melanin we need to change the language man and for those of you who still don't understand or still don't get why the language needs to change let me give you an analogy to illustrate my point sometimes when you're trying to show logic and common sense if you use an analogy it, it tends to highlight the obvious logic that we miss due to the scientific jargon. So think about this analogy and apply a common sense to it. Listen to this. We all have digestive systems, yeah? We all have a stomach that churns the food we eat, small intestines that extracts the nutrients from the food we eat, and a large intestine that expels the waste products and the harmful toxins from the food we eat. Now, if your children, for those of you who have young children, if your children were to ask you, mommy, daddy, why do I have a digestive system? 
what are you going to say to them? What would you tell them? Would your response be like, oh, good question. The reason why you have a digestive system, princess, is to protect you from the harmful effects of food. Your child will look at you like you're crazy, like, to protect me from the harmful effects of food. But I need food to live. <laughs> now stay with me, check this out. Does your digestive system protect you from the harmful effects of food? Someone answer that in the chat. Does your digestive system protect you from the harmful effects of food? Does it do that? Yes, it does. But you're not going to tell your children that's the reason why they have a digestive system, are you? Do you get where I'm going with this? Your digestive system does protect you from the harmful effects of food. But you're not going to tell your children that's the reason why they have a digestive system, are you? What are you going to tell them? Someone put it in the chat. What, if someone was to ask, why do we have a digestive system? What would you say? Break down food, extract the nutrients. Yeah. Anyone else? Why, why do we have a digestive system? What is the reason why we have a digestive system? To break down the nutrients and food. All right. So it's not to protect you from food because you need food to live. And your digestive system will protect you from the food, from the harmful effects of food. That's the reason why you've got a liver and kidneys and a large intestine to remove the toxins, if any, from the food that you're eating. So your digestive system does do that, but you're not going to tell, you know, that's not going to be the first thing you say to someone who's trying to understand the digestive system. We have a digestive system to digest food, to process food, to extract the nutrients from food for energy. Now, why do we have melanin? Replace the word food with sunlight and you'll understand everything you need to know about melanin. So why do we have melanin? To digest sunlight, to process sunlight, to extract the nutrients from sunlight for energy. So the same way you wouldn't tell your children that the reason why they have a digestive system is to protect them from food, the harmful effects of food, is the same way, the same reason why we shouldn't be telling children that the reason why they have melanin is to protect them from the harmful effects of UV radiation. So next time you hear someone say that the sun is this harmful thing that we all need protecting from, think of my analogy. It just sounds silly when you apply logic to it. Like the reason why you have a digestive system is to protect you from the harmful effects of fruits and vegetables. Yes, kale and cucumbers. You need protecting from kale and cucumbers. Absolute foolishness, mate. But this is the language that they use around melanin. And then they sprinkle a little bit of scientific jargon on top of it to make it sound like it makes sense. They'll be like, through the process of natural selection, nature gave you a digestive system to protect you from the harmful effects of apples and oranges. <laughs> even if we were to change the food source, because I don't even think people can relate to that, to my analogy, because no children eat fruits and vegetables. I mean, adults don't even eat fruits and vegetables. So let me, let me change the food source to something that children actually eat. Like, I don't know, milk and cookies. <laughs> it still doesn't make sense. Mummy, why do I have a digestive system? Oh, to protect you from the harmful effects of milk and cookies. Lord. Melanin absorbs light. And that light gets converted to electricity that the body uses for energy. So melanin is like a solar powered battery charging up your cells for work. According to who? Leon Marshall? No. According to the laboratory scientists who study this thing and do experiments on it. Listen carefully to Dr. Carl Marrow. Remember I played a clip of him earlier, yeah? Listen to this. Listen to what he says in this clip. Now, melanin has the same kind of ring structures and so on, and it makes very complex structures, and not all melanins are the same. 
uh, as we'll talk about in a minute. In fact, there's somebody even studying that and wondering whether energy is directly absorbed from the melanin in your skin and transformed into energy in your body. Okay, and uh, they even think about could in the future, and they're developing this now, they're taking melanin and making batteries out of them that store energy from the sunlight directly. It might, in fact, become a future source of how we're going to generate energy. Now, let's get back with that little bit of uh, physics background. Let's talk about melanin inside chaga and melanin inside the body. So it absorbs thousands of times more electromagnetic radiation actually than chlorophyll does. And chlorophyll is what we need to make proteins and sugars, uh, especially sugars, in, in the body. It exists in many other tissues, as I mentioned. It's actually a very important molecule in any woman who's having a baby because the fetus has all this melanin in it, as I'll show you. Okay. And it's thought to be, by some people, a master molecule that actually steers how the body communicates. Mm. So look at that. Look how important melanin is, melanin is to life. A man said that the fetus is full of melanin. And if you don't have a fetus full of melanin, you might struggle to, you know, get pregnant or have babies and that sort of stuff. Can you imagine? Like, you might struggle to have babies. Who's struggling to have babies? But that's how important melanin is to life, people. And did you catch what he said at the beginning? I don't know if anyone caught that. Did you hear what he said at the beginning? Yeah. He said they're going to start making batteries out of melanin. Why? Because it blocks sunlight and protects you from the harmful effects of UV radiation. No, <laughs> that's what they just, they just tell you that. So you don't understand the importance of this thing. That's, that's what they tell the public about melanin. Behind the scenes, they're looking to make these batteries out of melanin. Why? Because melanin absorbs UV radiation and that UV radiation charges it up like a battery. And Dr. Carl Marritt said that they're looking to do this very soon, like start making melanin batteries in the near future that people can swallow to help them with their health issues. Can you imagine melanin batteries that people can swallow to help them with their health issues in the near future? So look out for that. <laughs> look out for that in the near future. Oh, wait. The future is now. Listen to this. This is a clip from the scientists who have actually already made edible batteries using melanin. I kid you not. Listen. Cottingham, and welcome to this news briefing from the 252nd National Meeting and Exposition of the American Chemical Society in Philadelphia. We're joined today by Drs. Christopher Bettinger and Hong Ah Park from Carnegie Mellon University. They will be talking to us about a battery you can swallow that could power future edible medical devices. Dr. Bettinger? Katie, thank you very, uh, so much for having me. So it's uh, my pleasure to, to discuss our, our discovery and innovation in the world of polymers as they apply to batteries for ingestible medical devices. And so really what we're talking about here today is the notion that you can use biologically derived materials as important components of an ingestible battery. And so our broader vision for this work is really thinking about batteries as they exist today and making them application specific for edible electronics. And so specifically what we've discovered is that we can use melanin pigments. These are the same pigments in your hair and your skin and your eyes as components for these ingestible batteries. And so these have significant advantages over existing batteries because they're designed for this purpose. So we've basically one by one replaced the potentially toxic components of a battery uh, with that of benign endogenous materials uh, within the human body. Whew. Hmm. Now, as a logical person, you must be thinking the same thing I was thinking. I think people put it in the chat. After hearing that, the logical question is what? A lot of people put it in the chat already. Where are they going to... Where are they going to get all this melanin from to make all of these edible batteries? I wonder. So just to be clear, let's finish up now. 
because again, I want to keep these classes very short and concise. Melanin absorbs sunlight. Doesn't block it, it absorbs sunlight, especially ultraviolet light. You know, the light that they say is harmful and damaging. Melanin absorbs it, and when it absorbs it, it charges up your melanin like a battery. Your body can then use this energy to power your cells. And then these scientists come along and take the melanin and make edible batteries out of them. KMT. <laughs> SMH. FFS. <sighs> melanin absorbs light. It's very simple. And it doesn't just absorb light. It absorbs light from the sun. It can transmit light in the form of electricity and emit light. Now this shouldn't be hard to understand because every atom in your body does the same thing. Every atom can absorb light and emit light. And melanin is made of four main atoms, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. So if atoms can absorb light and emit light, and melanin is made of atoms, then two plus two equals four, fam, come on. Now what's crazy is the sun emits light in the form of ultraviolet rays, visible rays, and infrared rays. And these light frequencies give life to all living organisms on this planet. And the sun shines unconditionally. Have you noticed that? The sun shines unconditionally every day. Isn't that an amazing analogy for life? All you need to do is just do what the sun does. Rise and shine every day. And just from you shining, you won't even realize how many people your light will be helping. Your light will be energizing. Your warmth, your, your radiation, your love. So just shine. Now think about this. The sun doesn't shine on just one person in particular. Now does it? It just shines, it just emits light. And whoever's open to absorbing that light will benefit from that love that the sun is giving off unconditionally. Whoever's not open to that light, you know, people who find it offensive, use words like depredation or whatever, you know, any other scientific jargon they want to use, will not benefit from it. But the sun shines either way, regardless of what people think about it or say about it. So you should do the same. Just shine. And whoever benefits from your light, your love, your warmth, benefits from it. Whoever doesn't, doesn't. Simple. Science is simple. It's just that you've been taught it in a confusing way. And there's only one of two reasons why. Either the person teaching you science doesn't understand the subject well enough. Or they do. They just don't want you to understand it. I'm going to let you put two and two together on that one. All right. Let's open up the floor and get you guys to interact now. So remember I said at the end, I'm going to open up the floor and get you guys to interact. So you need to raise your hands. Now, before I allow you to do this, let me just lower everyone's hands because I don't know whose hands are raised for that specific purpose. So I'm going to lower everyone's hands right now. Yeah. And if you want to go live, if you want to go live, please raise your hand now. And then there should be a raise hand button for the people who have, for people who this is their first time in Zoom. You click the raise hand button, then I allow you to go live. And then you can speak and be part of this first pod class, which is part of history. So big up the people who are going to be part of history right now. So I can see Alison allow to talk. Alison, if you can unmute your mic, you're live on the podcast. Good evening, Leon. Good, Good evening, evening everyone. Sis. 
My son is called Leon, by the way. He's very uh, easy. I've been asking all kinds of questions. Um, so uh, what I wanted to say was, I'm aware that in my younger days, I used to bake myself in the Caribbean sun. I used to fall asleep, turn over and bake on the other side as well and go home, come back to England. But I, I spoke to a friend who, she's from Trinidad and her mother spotted a mole on her back. And she, the mother noticed that the mole was getting bigger. So I just wanted to say, as a radiographer, I come across people who've got skin cancers, all different kinds of cancers, that people just need to be aware that if you're gonna be out in the sun for an extended period of time, get someone to check your skin on a regular basis. Somebody who's known to you, somebody who loves you, somebody who sees you on a regular, you know, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, but just, just watch your skin basically because we can get melanomas too. Yes, indeed. And you know that um, if black people have issues with the sun, it's usually to do with our diet. Because again, just using simple logic, black people have been on this planet for a very long time. So mm -hmm. if the sun was the issue, we would have seen it 10 years ago, a hundred years ago, a thousand years ago, 10,000 years ago. In other words, 10,000 years ago, those super black people in Africa would have been getting melanomas. They weren't. So something has changed and it's not the sun something has changed with black people and it's not the sun so anytime something happens with regards to the sun i always tell people sun the sun is like the truth man anything that's going on with you the sun will reveal reveal it i always tell people like um before i went on my journey i used to suffer from hay fever like bad suffer from hay fever bad and it always obviously came out in the summertime i used to hate summer like because you know when the sun comes out you're going to start to suffer but the sun mm -hmm. was revealing something about my diet. Guess what? When I changed my diet and um, uh, cleaned out my colon, no hay fever. Isn't that amazing? So the sun, mm -hmm. even though I hate, I, and I, I went damn near 30 years of suffering from hay fever every year, hating the sun, hating summertime, and then cleaned out my colon and within... 30 days i don't even think it was 30 days it might have been less but within 30 days no hay fever and no hay fever since brilliant so we like again like like i said the sun can harm you but they like to do this finger wagging at the sun when it's not the sun you gotta look in the mirror and say hey listen what, what am i doing what can i change about my health to help me interact with the sun you know the best thing that's going to help you interact with the sun your diet because there's things in plants, they're called aromatic amino acids. Big up the people that have done my blacklisted health course. There's things called aromatic amino acids. They actually help your body absorb ultraviolet radiation. Ain't that amazing? So is there a link to the sun and people with eczema and asthma? Yes, and indeed. Pop, high, high, pop, sorry, sorry, high pollen asthma. So you only get asthma when the pollen is very high. Yeah. A lot of that is linked to um, inflammation, which is linked to uh, what does the um, white blood cells release? They release histamines. Yeah, a lot of that is due to histamines. Yeah. So um, big up uh, Jamie, put AAA. So you, you remember that from my course, aromatic amino acids. So yeah, people do my blacklistic health course. So you're not blaming the sun for all of our issues, man. You know what I mean? Thank you, Leo. <laughs> Thank you, sis. All right. Is it? Acousia or Acosia, you're live on the pod class. If you can unmute your mic, Acosia. Hi, hi, hi. hi. Acosia, it means born on the day of the sun. Oh, look at that. That's amazing, <laughs> sis. Yeah, that is yes. amazing. <laughs> I would love to say a, 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 a wonderful day to every single person listening to this podcast podcast um this is my first time ever and i'm talking from accra ghana oh, in wow. west africa and i just wanted to like bring greetings from the motherland to everybody who is watching oh, i'm sorry who's listening <laughs> <laughs> and um i i'm a pan-african okay and it, it's sad for me to come here and say i'm a pan-african because i was born and raised in africa but I was born and raised in the matrix, in the system. So for the better part of my life, I used to think 
you know, like a white person, I used to be a Christian and believe in every all the systems, and I knew nothing about myself. Yeah. I knew nothing about my melanin. My melanin. I actually hated my skin color because why am I so dark? Mm. And I would resort to all kinds of creams and all kinds of things to what they usually say. Ah, of course, yeah, lighten up a bit so that you can get married quickly. Mm. And the whole system has, you know, cultivated us, or how would I even say it? It has brought us in a, a, a way of thinking that melanin is the worst thing and in africa here people don't even call their blackness melanin mm. they refer to it as they don't even say melanin they say i'm dark in complexion they refer to their their melanin as complexion and mm. that is what it is yeah. it's just the way we were born you know and people hate the melanin so much in their system that there's a, 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 a joke in, in Ghana and people say, if I come back to this world and I hear push, push, it means um, I'm, I'm being born in Europe and I'll, I'll, I, would, I would gladly come to the world. But wow. if I hear chim, chim, which means push in, in a can, then that means I'm being born again in Africa and I, I wouldn't want to come back. Wow. That is, people joke with this, but people joke with it because they are finding ways to express the hatred for themselves in a funny way. Yeah. And that is what the matrix has done to the people on the continent. Yes, a lot indeed. of women on the continent are bleaching their, their skin. Mm. And this has become a pandemic because people, they, they feel like they want the, the lighter skin they are they get better attention better attraction to men they get favors and stuff like that i used to think like that that's how i know that is the situation but well, thank Until... you sis that is the reason why i'm doing this podcast because i saw someone in the chat talk about oh yeah i, I tell my children this all the time this is the reason why yeah. i'm doing this podcast because you guys can share this with friends and family they might just be like oh that's that's rubbish but yeah. The more we get this out there and the more we tell the truth about melanin, the more someone will look in the mirror who's maybe dark skin or dark hue, whatever you want to call it, and be like, oh my gosh, look at all this melanin. I love this. This is amazing. As opposed to, yeah. oh my gosh, look at my dark skin. I want to I wanna lighten yeah. it and blah, blah, blah. This is the reason why I say we need to change the language. Do you get yeah. me? Change yeah. the language and around melanin and not make it exactly. seem like melanin is this thing that's protecting us from something that's harming us. Like, it just... Yeah. Yeah, and and you know, um, I've actually shared the pop, the the Zoom um, channel for some of my. I, I actually have Pan African groups of WhatsApp and Telegram, and I shared it um, oh, with with them. And I just wanted to say that if if you do not start thinking of self love, if you don't start thinking of you know the reason why we have to become Pan African as black people is because the system teaches nothing about us we our knowledge is obscured everything about us is obscured the only way we get to know about ourselves and learn about ourselves is the why the reasons why we must do that is because for us to have access to the information because that's what you know the groups does for us gives us the information we need to understand who we are as black people and i'm telling you melanin Melanin is in everything, creation. Yes, melanin is in the sun. Melanin is in our skin. Melanin is in the, listen to this. Melanin is, co is covering the womb of white people to enable them to be able to give birth. Melanin is lined up in the womb of white women to be able to give birth. You can research this. Everyone's got melanin, melanin sis. Everyone has melanin. Yeah, it's important. Melanin yeah. is important for life to exist. That is it. But thank you, if sis. You I've got a couple to... other people that I want that want to go live. <laughs> okay, so, thank so you I, I want to quickly end up here. If you look at space and you ask the question, why is space black? But Earth has sunlight. 
The blackness of space is the womb of space and it contains melanin. Mm. It is melanin in a different state of form. So melanin is life. And when we, we have life, we should be grateful. So thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. And I'm grateful. You can check me out on YouTube at the Woke Africa Show. That's my YouTube channel. Thank you for going live, sis. You're part Thank of class you. one. Share this with your friends and family. I actually put the link to, uh, I've just created a new Telegram group specifically for this Melanin podcast. So anyone who wants to follow that can follow that. But let's yeah, move exactly. on. Thank you, sis. Uh, let's move on to Joy. Joy, you are live on the podcast. If you can unmute your mic, Joy. Joy, all right, if Joy is not going to unmute, let's go to Bianca. Bianca, you are live. Tell me what's on your melanin mind. Talk to me. Hi, evening, Leon. Hi, everyone. Um, it was just a quick question to say, um, do you know why maybe some people, when they're out in the sun here in the UK, if they're out in the sun for too long, they can feel quite nauseated or feel sick, feel dizzy? Um, I'd rather ask it here than to the doctors because they'll <laughs> they'll give their own kind of interpretation. But have you heard this before? Or is there anyone on here that has had that before where they've just been, you know, just out in the park? Oh, my God, my son's been so loud. Um, <laughs> out in the place game, out in the park, and the, when they come home, they just feel really ill, yeah. nauseated, sick. So some people in the chat are saying dehydration, so it could be due to dehydration. So making sure that you're hydrated when you're out in the sun yeah. or, yeah, you might become dehydrated. That will make you feel no, um, a bit nausey. But the thing is, again, like I said before, with regards to melanin, uh, the sunlight, anytime we're out in the sun and the sun, and it feels like the sun's doing us harm, like someone said, can we get sunburn? Yes, we can. And sunstroke, yes, we can. However, usually when um something again i look at the sun like the truth the sun is the truth so the same way i look at like my mum as the truth now my mum, when i was younger used to beat me now when my mum beat me i'm i have to think to myself why is my mum beating me because my mum's the truth so it's something to do with me it's not something to do with my mum. it's something to do with me that's how we should look at the sun so if the sun's beating you you're getting burnt or you feel sick or whatever you gotta look in the mirror and say what 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 can i do so d in the chat said green juicing yeah that's a great way to um help with your health and interact with the sun because those green juices those aromatic amino acids that you'll get from those green juices will help you interact with the sun again help you to absorb the ultraviolet radiation from the sun. So that's just one thing. But a lot of people are talking about dehydration. So just making sure you're staying hydrated, sis. And is that the same with sunburn? With sunburn? Well, you got to be um, making sure you're using the right creams and that sort of stuff. And one thing about us here that um, we pick up other people's cultures when it's not part of our culture. You see sunbathing, that's not our culture you know, just laying out in the sun. Go back in history and look at what black people were doing out in the sun. They were working, they were moving, they were always doing something out in the sun. They weren't just lying down in their garden, top off, <laughs> sunbathing. That's, that's someone else's culture, man. That's not our culture. And then we wonder why we get burnt just laying in the sun. No, move about, do something, man. Do something. But yeah. yeah. I've also, I, sorry, I've also just got one more question just about um, the fact that doctors say that we age um, skin. It, sorry, the sun makes our skin age. I don't know what's behind that. Dehydration makes your skin age. So, yeah, the sun can, again, if you're not properly dehydrated, the sun can dehydrate you more if you are dehydrated. But dehydration is the main thing that leads to um, wrinkles and leads to aging. Dehydration. And again, people that have done my blacklisted health course, you know, dehydration is directly linked to aging, not indirectly, directly. All you need to do is think about a grape. When a grape is hydrated, look at the skin. When a grape is dehydrated, look at the skin. Now, replace the grape with your face. That's it. Like when you're dehydrated, you're going to start to get wrinkles. It's, it's all to do with hydration. And the best, again, the best way to hydrate is green vegetable juice like lots and lots like two liters a day 
Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, sis. All right, let's move on. There's still a couple hands. Big up everyone that's part of this, you know, want to go live and be a part of history. Again, whether I do one class or a thousand and one classes, the people who are talking, going live, you're going to be part of history. You're going to be part of this. So enough respect. All right, Joy, let's go to... So many hands are going up now. I love it. All right. Brother Nat, you are live. If you can unmute your mic, my bro. Yes, sir. And greetings, greetings. Um, greetings. And just, well, I'll keep it short and sweet. I want to big up the, well, first of all, Sister Vanika, yourself, Brother Leon. From the from the first session till now, I'm just so proud, should I say, and, and seeing those in the community proud to see the work that you're doing. Thank you, sir. Um, and just on this journey. And even from our sister that had spoken, her name means the sun. It's yeah. always refreshing to, to hear new people come in. And it's almost like I always have this sense of saying, well, we're speaking to the converted, my sister. We, we pretty much all know of what she has said, but we're, we're, we know that, um, you know, we always gain more information and learn more. So give thanks, but it was just again a sense of smiling even more because what the sisters say you say with so much energy yeah and i'm just thinking yeah man yeah we know mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes 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 yeah mm -hmm. it's true that's why we have to get this knowledge out there to people who don't know it you get me yeah definitely and well, i mean my questions was two in in cases number one yes we need to get it out there as you said so i'm hoping can speak to yourself sister vanika with regards to how we can amplify that on galaxy yeah, um, and I guess other local because that's a podcast, my boy. So we'd easily be able to slap that on playback, cut it up, pull it on a jingle, like and mix, make it, make it consistent. So oh yeah, let's talk speak bro. more on that. Yeah, we'll speak more on that. The other thing was this, Doctor Carl Marrett. Yeah, I, have you got in touch with this one? Is he still alive? I know that's he's. The thing. Old, but it might be something where we could pick his brain, and if Listen. not, that just speaking about it just makes me think okay if it's not been done let's uh, i call it if you if you smell it you dealt it so i'll try and work on that as well but that's such a good idea bro i, I might have to reach out to him bro <laughs> and, and see if i can yeah. get him on one of these one of these podcasts because he, he's the type like i love when i find scientists who are just open and honest about meddling like do you get me there's no mm. jargon man just telling it as it is you see what i'm saying like i love that the truth, the truth and the way but yeah. bro, just keep rising, um, like the sunshine. <laughs> Peace <laughs> and love to everyone. Big up, brother. Peace Enough love. love, yeah? All the time, man. All right, one. Uh, Abin Bola, you're live, sis. If you can unmute your mic. Can you find the unmute? Or oh, let me go to... Joyce, Joyce, you're live on the podcast. If you can unmute your mic, you can go live. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, sis. Yes, hi. Um, yeah, thanks, Leon, for bringing this um, to our attention. Very, very, very important and very much needed. But I was just interested to find out how are they going to get the um, melanin from humans? And, and, <laughs> and from who? How? Yeah, to make these batteries. How are they going to do that? Well, I don't know about you, but when every time I go online, and I'm not saying anything, I'm just trying to put two and two together because they'll never tell us how they really get the melanin. But every okay. time I go online, yeah. I see, oh, such and such is missing. This young person is missing. That young person is missing. And they all seem to have something in common, the, the children that go missing. Wow. They all seem to have something in common, unfortunately. Yeah. And then people are in the um, people in the chat are saying aborted babies. Yep. So in America, I know in America, abortion is through the roof for black babies. Um, and in London, it's the same. Well, not the same, but London is the highest borough uh, or highest area in the UK that has um, the highest level of abortion. So wow. they don't throw away this stuff, man. They're like, what's crazy about um, melanin and even just biology and chemistry is the people who are who know about this stuff and who are studying it 
they understand the wealth they understand how important this stuff is Alison said the placenta as well yep when yeah. when people when women go into the hospital and they're having babies and they give away their placenta they're always getting our melanin left right and center wow. do you get what i'm saying okay. yeah always. you gotta think every time you go into like if you go into the hospital and you have surgery if they yeah. remove something from you trust me they're not throwing it away true good grief so there's no way that we can hold on to our um, intellectual bodies, as it were. Yeah, no, no. Unless, unless we have our own hospitals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. gosh, it's, it's really is food for thought. And um, you bringing this to our attention is so important. I, I'll share this with my girls as well, because they need to know all of this. Thank you. I'm going to make Thank sure so. that this um, class is available to download from tomorrow yeah. people so if you're in my whatsapp groups if you're in the hidden science academy whatsapp groups or yes. you're following the uh, telegram i'm gonna put the telegram link in the chat yeah. people make sure when you get this download share it with everyone yeah but thanks thank a you. lot sis thank thanks. you very much thank you all right faye faye if you can unmute your mic sis faye greetings leon greetings vanika greetings. greetings to the team and everyone who's on the chat i have to say first of all that I'm, I'm going to be quick that I owe my health to you guys you started me on this journey properly and I thank you I can't thank you enough thank you sis. um my question is you know how um they put out films like the pandemic and stuff to 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 actually it's like it they're priming us to get used to what's happening this I don't know why it came to me. Dracula and Frankenstein, they were body snatchers back in the day. So, I mean, it just seems like it's happening, but on a, on a, on a, on a bigger scale now. What do you think of that? Yeah, I think um, I'm going to have to do a class on it. I'm going to have to do a class on it because it does go deep, like even just the, um, the vampire culture. You got to think every time they're putting out movies and um, they put them out over and over again, think about the amount of vampire movies that come out, the amount of vampire TV shows. They create a culture through doing that. It's just like putting out superhero movies. The more superhero movies you put out, the more of a superhero culture you're creating to the point where you can create a universe. That's what they call Marvel. They call Marvel the Marvel universe. We've created a whole culture around these movies. Yeah. And everyone loves the culture. So why do they keep on putting out vampire movies? To create people, a culture around it. And it's crazy because people think it's real. So people are going around saying I'm a vampire. What kind of rubbish? Well, if you um, think about the, the vampire in its essence, not, the, not, the, um, not what they're actually doing, but in its essence, a vampire is someone who steals your energy. Mm. If they're making mm. melanin batteries, that's literally what they're doing. They're taking your energy and putting it into someone else. That's that's vampirism. True. Crazy. Thank you. But thank you, sis. Thank you. All right. Abimbola. Can you hear me? Yes, sis. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for this. Um, it's very interesting. And um, I did your first course at South Bank on yes, black Alyssa. I remember, oh, I remember yeah yeah and um still waiting to do the second part but anyway <laughs> such as life things happen yes. but it's very um what i was going to ask was um it is a bit worrying about the melanin batteries because it is where are they going to get the the melanin from because when you think the majority of the melanin like you say it's in all peoples um but it the majority is like africa and yes. i remember you know, and I remember I was reading somewhere where they're saying somebody, some idiot makes a decision that there's too many people in the world. And then they first think, well, we need to distinct, extinguish Africa. And I was thought, well, not if it's the center of civilization, you don't. Yeah. Um, so it's, a, it's very, you know, when they, you know, and it's always Caucasian scientists that start talking this rubbish about, you know, sort of edible melanin, um, uh, melanin batteries and unless they're going to do some huge uh, factory-led melanin production how are they going to get the get it well there's various ways they can get anytime we're sick 
they they get it. Every time we go into the hospital and we're sick, or not even sick, like like we said, when um, you go into the hospital and you give birth and you give them your placenta, like yeah, you gotta think, yeah. you gotta remember, yeah. Just like I uh, just went through in this class, melanin is not just the skin. So a lot of people are thinking, where well, how are they gonna get our skin? How are they gonna get our melanin, our skin? It's not just your skin. Melanin is in all your organs. All your, all your organs. Yeah, you so said if you're an organ donor. <laughs> Then they they'll get your melanin. A lot of people are organ donors, mm. donating blood, donating plasma, and all this stuff. Yeah, then they're literally they don't even have to steal it. People are giving it to them. That's true. That's true. But thank you, sis. I'm gonna try and get. It is quite first. right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sis. Uh, uh Carol, you're live, Carol. Let's try and get through some more before I finish up, Carol. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, sis. Okay, what I was going to ask was, does heat, the more heat you have, whether it's in the house or outside, does that create more melanin? Heat? Yes. No, specifically, it's ultraviolet radiation your body wants, your melanin sun. wants. Yeah, sun, ultraviolet. But remember, the sun, the sun emits heat in the form of infrared, ultraviolet radiation and visible radiation as well so the sun emits different types of light and your body needs every single part of that your body needs ultraviolet light for melanin your body your body needs um uvb light for vitamin d and your body needs infrared light to um charge up your waters like they call it structured water so your body needs all types of light and you get all those types of light from um, the sun so it's not just the heat it's the the light frequencies specifically the light frequencies from the sun okay thank you sis thank you all right uh let's see antonia antonia you're live on the pod class Hi, Leon. Can you tony me? what's yeah. going on oh <laughs> I saw the name and I was hoping it was you. Like, this is family, people. This is family. Yes, Tom, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. I literally, I'm just at uni. I was just doing uni work and I just came in and mum spoke to mum and she was like, you got to join the court. Listen, I think it's the best decision I've made since this year, this year started. I'm so happy. I'm so happy I've joined. But I just wanted to ask you a question. Um, in terms of, like, my skin and how my skin is when I go over to the Caribbean when I've been to Barbados my skin and like my face because I will break out and have scarring it is absolutely flawless I don't know if I just need to move over there or what needs to happen (laughs) but when I come back here it's just instant with with the weather conditions It, it I don't know if it's the sun how it works but I just wasn't sure if you had more like information on that as to why when I go over there my skin just completely changes yeah, a lot of people say that about where they're from originally. So we had the cis from Ghana and, you know, people might be listening from all t- all parts of Africa and obviously from the Caribbean. A lot of people say when they go back to where they're from, like from Jamaica or mm-hmm. Barbados, their skin just cl- clears up. There's mm-hmm. something to do with our natural environment that is just conducive to us. There's mm-hmm. something with the natural environment. So you got to think over here in the UK, one, the food that we're eating is not even real food. Two, the water's not fresh water. And the fruits and vegetables, they're sprayed with pesticides and herbicides and all that sort of stuff. So even if you are e- eating healthily, chances are you might still have issues with your skin and that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Then even, some people, because people say, ah, oh, is the sun different? Like when I go to Egypt, the sun feels different to when I'm in Jamaica and blah, 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 blah. blah. It's got something to do with the atmosphere as well. Definitely. Mm-hmm. It's got something to do with the atmosphere as well. So the fact that we're over here, the pollution in this air yeah. can have an issue with us. And we, we can't see it, in it. So mm-hmm. we're walking around thinking we're breathing in fresh air, but the pollution in the air, especially if you live somewhere or work somewhere where um, it's, um, there's a lot of, like you're in the city, so there's a lot of cars and okay. a, a lot of pollution from the cars and that sort of stuff. So that can all have an effect on your skin. Mm. definitely that can all have an effect on your skin but yeah it's it's like it's like like i say the sun's like the truth it's like the sun's telling you something like this is the environment you need to be in (laughs) and this is why when you explained and you and you kind of broke it down about um you was 
putting through the videos of what um, these people were saying about you know how the sun will be harming us and what I was thinking oh my goodness like it just made you made it so easy to understand and I'm so grateful that I actually heard that because it, it just makes so much sense but we need the sun we need, we need the, the sun. sun thank you tones great right. thank you as well speak to all you right. soon speak to you soon all right bye all right let's see if we can get some more in before we finish loads of hands are gone up Vivi Vivi you're live. Yup, yup. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Leon. Thank you for, for this evening. It was very informative and I really like how you broke down um, the language of science and you know how they make it so complex when really we should make it accessible for everyone. So really a massive thank you for taking the time for us to educate and inform us. Um, I have a question. Um, my mother has an autoimmune disease. I also put it in the chat just in case I didn't have a chance to, to, to ask it. So just ignore it when you see it. Um, my mother has an autoimmune disease and um, she's been told never to expose herself to the sun. Not even a little bit, whether it's spring, summer, winter, autumn, whatever, whenever the sun is shining, do not get in the sun. And they do give her extra vitamin D um, in order for her to, you know, <laughs> I want to say survive. Now we are not... Um, we are not heavily blessed with melanin. Unfortunately, we're quite on the on the lighter side, and uh, they told her no sun at all. So I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that, or the reason why they would tell her not to expose herself to the sun. Uh, I didn't catch the disease. If you can put the disease in the chat so I can look it up and that sort of stuff, but it, there's there's no specific name to it. It's just an autoimmune disease. Oh. So her body's attacking her basically. Oh, okay. Oh. Do you know what I think this is? And again, like like I said at the beginning with my disclaimer, I'm not a laboratory scientist or or a, a GP. However, um, anytime they say that the body's attacking you, yeah, Victoria put it in the chat, it's autoimmune disease. Now, autoimmune diseases are based on white blood cells, mm -hmm. white blood cell activity, a lot of white blood cell activity, because they like to tell us that white blood cells are our immune system. But they're really not the white blood cells are just there to clean up stuff after something goes wrong so if um if there's some type of infection in the body the white blood cells will come in and try and kill the bacteria and get rid of the infection but they don't they don't prevent any diseases they don't they're not part of your immune system wow. what is part of your immune system is your melanocytes which produce melanin mm -hmm. which rely on the sun now if they're telling you not to go out in the sun this could be because of the medication that they've got your family member on. Because sometimes when we, we're on medication, if we go the holistic route, it can have a, um, a counteractive effect on the medication. Right. So that's the reason why they might be saying, don't go out in the sun, because it could have a counteractive effect on the medication, which could be dangerous. I see. I'll I'm give you a classic example. Some people who are on um, blood pressure blood pressure lowering drugs mm -hmm. they're told not to eat grapefruits you know why no. because grapefruits lower your blood pressure naturally oh. so if you're on blood pressure lowering medication and you then eat grapefruits your blood pressure might become so low that you could die wow. so the doctor will tell you don't go for the healthy stuff don't do the natural stuff Mm -hmm. continue with the medication so that might be what they're saying with regards to the sun don't go out in the sun because if you go out in the sun it's going to affect the medication and that could be dangerous mercy yeah that makes perfect sense thank you for that thank all you right. thank much. you sis thank you all right i was there's only three more hands i'm going to try and get through all three of these before we finish up so nicole nicole you are live on the pod class you can unmute your mic hi good evening everyone <laughs> um, yes, I wanted to um, speak about what Antonio Mears said. I actually remember the name because my mom, she's a Mears, her maiden name is a Mears um, before she was married. Um, we are from Barbados. Okay. So um, yeah, what it is, is that I grew up in Barbados. I came over to the UK when I was 24 years old and I've been here um, since then. Of course, I've traveled back and forth to Barbados regular. But what I would say, I remember coming here um, when I was 24 and I probably didn't go back to Barbados. I probably was here for about maybe three years in. I had the opposite reaction. So what 
I actually kind of realized what it is now. What I have realized over the years what happened. So I came over here, say probably about three, four years in, didn't go back to Barbados for that time. I went back after four years and I had a very, very bad skin reaction. Yeah, and yeah. it was probably cons- it could look maybe like a heat rash that I had. It covered all my back, all my waist. Um, I remember going to the beach thinking, what's wrong with the seawater? Like, why is my skin breaking out? This has never had, I've never had any type of rash living in Barbados as a little girl going to school, never had any type of breakouts. And all my skin was covered in rash. Came back to the UK, skin dried up, skin was fine. Went back another year, same thing happened. One year, I went back to Barbados and I made sure that I just drank nothing but water. Mm-hmm. And that's when I realized that whatever I was taking in within the UK, within London, my skin was actually, the sun was actually purging my skin. So that rash that I, I was getting was actually a, probably a purge. And yeah. everything, all the toxins that I actually took in, the bad food that I'm ne- I never used to eat before. You know, you ca- I came here and I, I, I know about fast food. In Barbados, I just grew up on, you come home, your mom, your mom cook every day, is fresh food, it's bread fruits, you know, it's just natural stuff. And I realized that every, all the toxins that I was actually taking in here, my skin was actually trying to purge itself. So that skin rash I had, that, that effect was not effect because of the bad, um, because of um, going back to Barbados with the heat. People told me it was, when I came back here and went to the GP, they said, oh, it was the heat, it's a heat rash. Mm. And then I realized over the year, I've actually hydrated myself in Barbados, constantly drinking a lot of water before I even leave the UK and go to Barbados. I realized my skin is fine and it's glowing and it's beautiful, but definitely I experienced a purge of living in Barbados, being good with the heat, coming here, eating not as good, going back to Barbados, skin breaking out. But once I hydrate and I eat good food, I'm good. So I, again, the sun is what we need because the sun is, it also tells us what our body doesn't need. Or what, yes. we're, what, what, what we need to look at, like, as you said, is from the inside out. You know, we have to look at what we're taking in and be very conscious of it. And our, our, the sun will tell us, okay, you're doing something wrong. wrong. Yeah. That's what so thank, thank you. you sis. Thank you for sharing that because a lot of people will relate to that where they might go out in the sun and have breakouts where yeah. the sun is actually purging their skin. Exactly. The sun is actually getting it's but a lot of people they don't want to go through that no uncomfortable exactly. process of the yeah. sun purging the skin or purging their body and all of having the breakouts. You gotta kinda yeah. you gotta think if you got a lot of toxins in your body, they have to come out. They have to come out. That's it. They have to come so out. If they're somewhere. coming out, they're gonna show on your skin for a little while, not forever, but they no, have to come exactly. out. They have to come out. And yeah. Some people don't wait. Well, not even wait. Some people just don't allow the process to happen. They want the drugs and the medication, which is only yeah. gonna make it worse. Yeah. The and the drugs yeah. and medication push the toxin back in. Back into your system, yes. Back in. So, yeah. yeah, thank you for sharing, sis. Thanks thank you. That. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. And I'm going to try and fit in. Joy, can you unmute your mic, Joy? No? All right. Oh, oh hi there. Ah, I caught finally, you just at the I, end. Yeah, I finally found it. I've had problems with this thing all afternoon. No worries. Thank you so much for everything you're doing. And thanks for this Um discussion tonight unfortunately my granddaughter wasn't here to listen to it um what i wanted to ask one of the ladies asked it's to do with the melanoma yeah and the sun that's the question i wanted to ask originally and what's the question sorry now, um how does that affect people in the sun why is that why this why is the sun a cause Oh, okay. Problem. All right. So I, when I know my auntie who was in Jamaica, she had a lump on her back and she was told it's because of the sun why that happened to her. Yeah. So and if it's supposed, if the sun is supposed to be uh, such a, a daring factor for us as black people, why, you know, what part of it that affected her in that, that way? Well, yeah. So like um, I said earlier, sometimes when the sun reveals something, yeah. it's because of something that's happening internally. So it could be due to diet. It could be due to just the environment that they're in, the pollution, the water. It could be due to something internally that's happening. The sun's just revealed it. But what people who, you know, when they're talking about science, especially when it comes to melanin, they'll say, oh, it's the sun. It's yeah. the sun. And yeah, it could be. Like I said 
um, during the podcast, can the sun harm you? Yes, just like food can. If you eat too much food or the wrong type of food, food can harm you, yeah? So it's the same with the sun. The sun can harm you. However, again, I, I like to look at the sun as the truth. So if the sun is harming you, you've got to look within and say, what am I doing the, that's making the sun harm me? Is it because of my diet? Is it because of my colon? It's usually the colon's packed up or whatever. And you've got to look within and see what you can do to um, improve your relationship with the sun. What you don't do, logically speaking, what you don't do then is to finger wag at the sun and say, oh, you you evil thing, you, and, and block it and avoid it. The logic would say that, but these scientists and these doctors will tell you, avoid the sun, the sun's bad, ultraviolet radiation is bad. But according to the science, that is not true. And you don't even need science. You don't even need to pick up a science book to understand the importance of the sun. Because again, like I said earlier, if the sun was dangerous to us, we would have saw it in our history. We would have saw it a hundred years ago, we would have saw it a thousand years ago, we would have saw black people, dark skinned black people with melanomas, mm. but we don't. Sorry, no, I was just gonna say, so you wouldn't put it in the category of it being hereditary? No, okay. no I'd, I'd think it's something to do with your lifestyle, something to do with your diet. And again, the sun can harm you. It's not like the sun, it's not like I'm saying the sun cannot harm you, the sun mm. can harm you. But again, that's not um, the main thing that we think about when we think about the sun. We think about the sun um, energizing everything on this planet the same way we think about food energizing us. We're not going to look at food and say, oh, food is so harmful, even though it is. But we got to look at the, the main thing that the sun's doing. So anytime the sun reveals something about us, like with me, it revealed hay fever. I got to look within. It's not until I looked within and I cleaned out my colon and then two twos, like I'd, I'd never suffer from hay fever again. Like, again, I suffered from hay fever every year for over 30 years. I used to hate summers. And then within 30 days, hay fever gone. But thank you, sis. Thank Thanks you, for sir. being a part of this first class. And now, uh, Bilal. Hey, how's it going? Yes, Bilal, greetings. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, really feel good to be here. Um, I, I I must be. I do apologize. I came a little bit late, so I missed uh, the majority of the beginning bit. But I did catch up towards the end. Um, and I just want to say you're doing some really good work today, brother. And um, it's all about sharing this knowledge because this knowledge is so important. Um, my question is: um, even though we are aware of what let's call them the superpowers or the industry or the the corporations are doing to us. Is there any, maybe some tips you can give us, you know, um, just practical things of how to share this knowledge with people in our, in our community? You know, I know so many people who are, uh, there's one person I know who's got um, everything under the, under the sun, ironically, in terms of illnesses. She's got fibromyalgia, she's got diabetes, she's got um, uh, all these other things, uh, joint problems, neck problems, heart problems, stomach problems, and the GP is just pinging her medication like like he's at the casino, mm. you know, and her, her symptoms are getting worse and worse and worse. I keep telling her you need to switch to natural, get your grass, get your feet on some grass. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like fresh yes. air and all these sort of things. Um, yes. But she's so conditioned by the system, it's very hard to, you know, take her out of it. So I don't know if there's any kind of tips you can give us to just – make people aware that natural is best and forget the corporations forget what they're trying to uh they're trying to pull wool over our eyes for the sake of personal gain for greed for money mm. you know i mean so, you know it's that, tough not... well i've created a blacklisted health course that would help anyone who's really uh, open to you know walking that path to get on the holistic route the thing mm. is with the holistic route though um it does take a bit of effort on the part of the person who's trying to heal. So one, you have to learn about your body from a black perspective or just learn about your body from, you know, um, from doing self education. So mm -hmm. my black holistic health course will help, but, and that takes a bit of effort. That means, oh, I gotta sit down and learn this stuff. And, you know, so that's effort. So people don't want to do that. And then changing your diet is effort drinking more water for for a lot of people is effort 
you get what I'm saying? So mm. a lot of people just will be like, oh, doctor, just tell me what to do. Okay, take this pill three times a day, every day, and your symptoms will be gone. That's not effort. That's easy. Yeah. Now, when someone's in pain, and I, I can say this from personal experience, when someone's in pain, they don't want the effort option. They want mm. the easy option. I'm in pain. Just tell me what I need to do to get out of this pain right now. Okay, take this pill. Okay, I'm going to take the pill. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. Whereas... It's so difficult, isn't it? It is so difficult because the delayed gratification, like I've taken the long route doing the holistic route. But like mm. I said, now, hay fever, I was suffering from hay fever for over 30 years. I don't suffer from it at all no more. I suffer oh. from eczema. I don't suffer from it at all anymore. There were mm. so many things I suffered from, you know, that I was able to reverse doing the holistic route, but it took time um, learning this stuff, learning how my body worked and um, learning about melanin and that sort of stuff. And it took time and effort to do things that I, I wouldn't necessarily want to do. But the, the payoff is amazing because now yeah. when I go out in the sun, I've got an amazing relationship with the sun. Like the sun loves me. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> And that That's is thing, amazing. It's, it's, it's two steps back. So one step back, two steps forward, isn't it? So trying to convince someone that they need to do that is probably half your battle. And then once they've actually gone down that avenue, you know, the rest gets a bit easy. And, uh, you know, I really feel sorry for these people because they're, they're struggling every day. These, these GPs are handing out drugs like they're handing out drugs, if you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's horrible, man. And, you know, things like Pfizer and uh, GSK, these pharmaceutical companies are making a killing, relying on our, on our ignorance and naivety and mass influence via, you know, media and everything else. So it's, it's like you're trying to push water up a hill with a rake. Yeah. But I'm still pushing, do you know what I mean? And that's what it's about. People man. like I'm... you, yeah, you inspire me to just, yeah. Thank you, man. I, I'm not going to stop. Like, I know it's going to be hard to get this information out. And I know people are like the brainwashing is, is getting stronger now. Like, all you need to do is just look at the information that they are allowing and not allowing. Yeah. You put out information, it gets quote unquote fact checked. It gets deleted. It gets Oof. removed from the Internet. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, so Much. you can just tell how like the, the attack, like, if anything, I'm going to use, um, what's her name, Dr. Nina Jabro Jabrowski's word, the degradation, the attack on real information. Mm. The attack, there's, a, there's an attack on real information. So, yeah, the more we can get people to just, you know, uh, spread the word and listen to this. So that's why I've made this like a down something um, that people can download and just listen to. So it's not mm. something that, because, you know, sometimes when you're trying to um, show people the light, you'll be like, okay, watch this. And it'd be like a two hour video and people are like, I'm not watching that, man. I'm not watching it. But if you tell us, if you say to someone, hey, listen to this and they can listen to it whilst they're driving or listen to it whilst they're doing their, their housework or something, you never know. Yeah. Subliminally, the, the message might be going in. So I can't wait to make this like a download that people can listen to. Do you get what I'm saying? Well, I'm, I'm right there with you, brother. And um, I mean, I know Leon's on this, this uh, podcast as well. And uh, we, we, you know, we're trying to do things together. And he's, he's, he's with me just saying, look, we just need to get the word out because we're dropping like flies literally to the industry, to the corporations, and something needs to be done. And things like what you're doing is just, you know, hats off to you, brother. Nice one, bro. I appreciate you, man. Thanks, man. All right, then, bro. Uh, is there more hands are going to... All right, Yvette. I'm going to make this one the last one. Yvette. You're live on the pod class. Hello. Hi, sis. Hello. Um, I don't even know where to start. I'm so happy that I found you. You're a godsend. Thank you, sis. Um, I've been a, per a person that's um, got loads of medical things throughout my own life. And I was, I'm coming to 60 and I felt like I was 100. Mm -hmm. And through listening to you, um, it made me, you talked about um, statins, and I'm a diabetic, so I was on statins. 
And you talked about that and said how it blocks your body from functioning. Mm -hmm. And I took my life into my hands with God above me and your words. And I stopped my statins. It might have been the wrong thing to do to just stop it, but I stopped it. Wow. Within a month or so, I was feeling my age. I was feeling the person that I am, not an old embodied um, person. Wow. So um, the doctors kept saying to me, um, if you don't take it, you might have a heart attack. I've had a heart operation um, years ago. I've got a, um, a mechanical valve, but I, I didn't like how I felt with the med me all the medication that I take. So by doing it, it, I saw the change straight away. So I thank God, you, you're a life saver for me. Thank you, sis. Yeah. You're a blessing. Thank you um, for sharing. I really yeah. appreciate that. Thank That's you. all I wanted to say. Thank you. And um, thank you for that. I really do appreciate that. But like the sis said, um, it could have been dangerous her just stopping the the medication. So I'm glad she's feeling better. But um, one thing that will definitely stop um me doing more podcasts if is if they come after me because I'm telling people to come off a of medication. So you know everyone listening to this now, you know I'm not saying come off a of medication because that is actually dangerous. However, if you are looking to go the holistic route, I have a, a black holistic health course. You go to the hidden science academy .com, um, you click on course access. I've got various courses that will help you guys get on this holistic route get on the, the straight and narrow plus these pod classes will help as well so every every month I'm going to be doing these pod classes and just get this information out there so you know we're here to help the Hidden Science Academy myself I'm here to help and I'm glad that people are using the information and you know reversing diseases and bettering their lives and that sort of stuff so big up everyone in the chat is like yeah big up that was well done sis for doing that but um all right, <laughs> let's take one more. I'm just going to take one more and then I'll finish up because I still got some announcements to make. People were asking about the WhatsApp group. I'm going to post the WhatsApp group. There's a Telegram. Everyone's on Telegram. I'm going to post the Telegram group so people can add themselves to that. I've actually got courses starting next week as well, the hidden science of pain. So people who suffer from pain and inflammation, jump on the courses, man. All you need to do is become a member of the Hidden Science Academy. You know, just become a VIP member and you can get our courses for free. So let me just, just to finish up. So join the Melanin Pod class Telegram group. Let me post that in the chat. So this is the Melanin Pod. Now, if you're in any other one of my groups or the Hidden Science Academy groups, you'll, you'll get these notifications anyway. However, the one that I'm about to post in the chat right now is specific to this Melanin Pod class. So everything to do with this Melanin podcast will be um, posted in that Telegram group. So if you're on Telegram, join yourself to that Telegram group and you'll get all the information with regards to Melanin. I'll even do like a recap. I'll put recaps in that pod, in that Telegram group of each class. Yeah, so written recaps so you guys can read through the recap. So that's, that's the podcast. Uh, for the WhatsApp group, if my sister's in it, if, uh, Vidika, if you can post one of the WhatsApp groups so people can add themselves to the WhatsApp group if they want to add themselves to the WhatsApp group. People, I've got some courses coming up. So go to the Hidden Science Academy.com. I'm going to post it in the chat now. The Hidden Science Academy.com forward slash course access. You go to that and you'll see the courses that we've got coming up. Remember, if you're already in our groups, you don't need to be added to another one. However, the Melanin Pod class Telegram is specific just for these classes. Yeah, the Melanin Pod class is specific for these classes. All right, is there anything else? 
Oh, one last announcement, people. For the people that have been following us for a little while, you know we used to do the physical events before we went into lockdown. We're going to start doing the physical events again in the summertime. Look out for our physical events, yeah? There's going to be one in August and one in September. The one in September is the hidden science of black hair. You don't want to miss that. That's going to be in Birmingham. So I don't care where you are in the UK. I want to see everyone at that. The hidden science of black hair. Meet the whole team in person. Meet my, myself, my sister, the whole team. You know, all the people that do the admin behind the scenes. You can come to Birmingham and meet us at the hidden science of black hair. That's going to be, and it will be live streamed as well. So if you can't make it to Birmingham, you'll be able to watch it anyway. But yeah, big up everyone that's been a part of today. Let me just finish up now. Genius. My name is Leon Marshall, and that concludes the end of Podcast One. Thank you everyone for being a part of this. You're a part of history, trust me. And just remember, be the light you seek. Just shine, man. More light. More love, more life, one. Thanks for listening to Marshall's Melanin Pie Class. To download this episode, go to the hiddensciencecademy.com forward slash pod class. Be sure to catch the next class on the first of the month. And if you like this one, please share it with your friends and family. If you're on Instagram, you can follow Leon Marshall at The Scientist Online. And remember, keep shining. Can't do it, no.